Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our epic journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the 12th and final round of the 1968 season, the Mexican Grand Prix. It was held on the 3rd of November, it had 21 entries, all of them took part in the race with 11 ending up retiring. The race consisted of 65 laps completed in 1 hour, 56 minutes and 44 seconds. Joe Siffert started the race from Paul Eamon was second on the grid, but retired on lap 17 with a transmission problem. Graham Hill started from 3rd, Holmes started from 4th but retired on lap 10 due to a broken suspension. Dan Gurney started from 5th but retired on lap 29 also with a broken suspension. And John Sturdy started the race from 6th but retired on lap 18 due to an overheating engine. In the commotion, Graham Hill managed to take the lead and win the Mexican Grand Prix from McLaren, who climbed from 9th into 2nd and was 1 minute 19.32 seconds behind Hill. Jackie Oliver, who started the race from 14th, moved up into 3rd. He was 1 minute 40.14 seconds behind. Rodriguez went from 12th to 4th. He was 1 minute 41.09 seconds behind. Bonnier climbed from 18th to 5th. He was 1 lap down. And Siffert dropped from the lead of the race into 6th and was one lap down as well. Despite that, Siffert proved to be the fastest man of the race, posting a time of 1 minute 44.23 seconds on lap 56. Greetings from the fantastic Hermanos Rodriguez circuit where a lap starts off with a very long run down into turn 1, a long open right hander, which leads straight into turns 2 and 3, forming a tight right left chicane. Next we come through turns 4 and 5 which form a left right chicane, pay attention as the right hander is significantly tighter. A quick burst of power and we arrive into turn 6, a very tight cambered right hand hairpin. Be careful through here as it is very easy to throw the car into the barrier. This is followed by turns 7 and 8, they form a medium speed left right chicane. Next up is turn 9 which is the beginning of a series of S turns ending with turn 13 a fast left hander. Lastly we come into turn 14 a high speed 180 degree cambered right hand corner that brings us around onto the main street and that is a lap around the Hermanos Rodriguez circuit. And here we are in qualifying coming around to set our first and only qualifying lap a 151.822 which isn't very good in fact it's completely horrible but that's all I was managed to get out of this car on this track so uh, I guess we'll have to work with that as we now take a look at the previous Mexican Grand Prix winners haven't won a single race here yet so uh, hopefully things will change however I'm not very hopeful but who you can never know with this game I guess anyway we have Danny Holm on pole with Pedro Rodriguez in second Jackie X starting from third fourth is ja Jackie Stewart Jackie X starting from third Jackie Stewart 4th, 5th Chris Amon, and rounding up the top 6 is John Surtees. Bruce McLaren starting from 7th, followed by Richard Atwood in 8th, 9th is Pierce Carriage, Graham Hill 10th, followed by Derek Bell in 11th, Jackie Oliver is 12th, then in 13th we have Jochen Rent, Jean-Pierre Beltois is 14th, 15th Lucien Bianchi, Silvio Moser 16th, in 17th we have Joe Siffert, followed by Henri Pescarolo in 18th, 19th is held by Jack Brabham, followed by Johnny Servoz Gavin in 20th, Dan Gurney 21st, Kurt Ahrens Jr. 22nd, 23rd, Vic Alford, Ludovico Scarfiotti 24th, Moses Solana 25th, Dave Charlton 26th, 27th is Joe Bonnier, 28th David Hobbs, 29th John Love, Bobby Unser 30th, 31st Andy Higgs, and Robin Widows 30 seconds. So that is the lineup for the Mexican Grand Prix, the final round of the season. Hopefully it will be a good one for Andy. If nothing else, let's hope that we do not retire from this race. We've done that quite a few times this season, so it will be quite nice to be able to finish a race for once. So yeah, that was a relatively slow start but everyone was slow so didn't lose there too much as we move up into 30th and we're now taking a look at John Love racing down towards turn 1 can we overtake Love yes we can we are now 29th getting a, alongside Dave Charlton but I kind of hold back no, I didn't want to risk it coming into the corner didn't want to crash into anyone however I did manage to briefly overtake him on the outside but he then regains it immediately as we enter the chicane. 
now as we now take a look at a replay of the start once again a, a bit of a slow start for Andy but for everyone else really um, I guess that's kind of expected when you have 32 cards on the grid anyway I a little bit later on on the opening lap I just managed to overtake Dave Charlton again for just a brief second as he overtakes me again on the outside through the chicane now coming into the hairpin and David House manages to squeeze fast on the inside there so we drop down to 30th which isn't good but maybe we'll have more luck later lap 2 and there's a car at the side of the road yellow flags I didn't quite catch who it was but I'm sure we'll get a replay so we'll find out it was Jackie Stewart in his mantra coming through the hairpin he goes wide on the exit, crashes into the barrier, loses his front left and is out of the Mexican Grand Prix. We're now moving on to lap 3 here as John Love manages to overtake us on the inside. So we drop down to 30th again, which isn't good but hopefully we'll be able to overtake him at some point. Yes we do on lap 4 here as we continue our race and a little bit later on John Love was trying to regain his position but we managed to uh, keep him behind us as we take a look at a replay of Jackie X coming around to finish lap 4 and post the fastest lap of the race so congratulations to Jackie X lap 5 now and I, I just overtook Ludovico Scarfiot but of course he doesn't really matter because he realistically he wasn't in this race anymore as, as we come through out of the chicane there I lose control of the car slide it and well lose a bunch of positions we are now back down in 30th which isn't good lap 8 and we catch up to a couple of cars and move up into 28th Don't, not quite sure why they were so slow but they were and that allowed us to gain a couple of positions lap 9 and we regain 28th and we're now looking at Scarfiotti obviously doesn't really cancel that's 27th 26th now as we overtake David Hobbs and we're looking at Silvio Moser maybe we'll catch him at some point maybe not who knows but we'll try our best lap 9 and we catch up to Sil Silvio Moser overtake him and, and that's 25th so doing very small progress however we have a blue flag so I have to move to the side I I'm trying to kind of get Moser to give the position up but he doesn't so I have no choice but to leave let Silvio Moser through and, and the faster cars as well Unlike the AI, I will get penalized if I don't let the faster car through. The AI doesn't, which is kind of unfair, but hey, what can you do? Lap 10 here, and I overtake Moser. At, I managed to catch back up to Silvio Moser and overtake him, so we move back up into 25th as I kind of, uh, I don't know, just swing the car left to right for no reason. Lap 10, still lap 10 here, and... John Love is out of the race, so that's bad as we have a blue flag once again. And here is a replay of Jochen Rent coming through this left hander. And one of the Matras there crashes into him quite horribly and flips him upside down. And well, that's the end of the race. And we also have a replay of Lucien Bianchi, who also retired, coming into the hairpin there, with his car upside down, and that is the end of his race still on lap 10 and I as I let a couple of faster cars through as I, and I also managed to unwillingly let Hobbs and Moser through so we lose quite a few positions here not ideal but again unlike the AI I do get penalized if I do not concede uh, do not let the faster cars through however on lap 11 I managed to catch back up to Moser and pass him so that's 25th once again and now we're looking at David Hobbs however I go through too fast through that right hander and I well kind of messed up everything so I had to slow down and get give positions back lap 12 and I overtake Moser again so we are back in 25th chase and we see David Hobbs right in front of us I try to catch him have a pretty decent run out of turn uh, 3 there and we overtake Hobbs as we take a look at a replay of Robin Widows who has, has some problems with his brakes coming into the hairpin there 
and he's out of the race lap 13 i overtake john love so we move up into 23rd which is quite nice now chasing after joe biner not sure if we'll be able to overtake him coming around to finish lap 13 and henry pescarolo is out of the race so that's 20 seconds for us which is very very nice as we take a look at a replay of Henri Pescarolo who has some problems with his suspension he pulls to the side there and he is out of the Mexican Grand Prix lap 14 now and Pedro Rodriguez is also out of the race so that's one more free position for us and here is a replay of Pedro Rodriguez who has some problem, problems with his brakes and crashes into the strongest crowd in the world there <laughs> manages to push him aside uh, I wouldn't want to crash into that crowd <laughs> anyway we move on to lap 15 as I we get blue flagged again and have to concede places and which isn't very good but oh well lap 16 and I managed to catch up to David Hobbs and I regain 21st which is quite nice but then I go wide through coming out of that left hander and David Hobbs overtakes us so we drop down to 20 second but then regain 23rd on lap 17 lap 18 now ch uh, chasing after after Dave Charlton trying to make up ground as much as possible as we take a look at a replay of David Hobbs who has an accident and well he will be retiring obviously lap 20 and there's a car on the side of the road that's Joe Bonnier who has smoke coming from his engine so Obviously, that's the end of his race as we take a look at a replay of Joe Bonnier coming out of the hairpin trying to uh, keep up with, I think, Kurt Emmons there, but his engine gives up and that is the end of his Mexican Grand Prix. Unfortunately for him, he did manage to complete 90% of race distance, so he does classify as we now have a look at a replay of Jackie X coming around to win the mexican grand prix congratulations to jackie x and i think that a championship a championship title for jackie x so that's double congratulations i guess as we ourselves come around to finish the race and well we didn't finish quite well but that is that x wins home second atwood third fourth amon fifth hill mclaren sixth jackie x also managed to post the fastest lap of the race so he did quite well and there we are with down in 19th a lot of people managed to finish the race somehow so that's quite nice and here are the retirements only a handful so nothing crazy i actually expected more people to retire here but i'm happy to say that there weren't as many retirements so that's quite nice in fact there were fewer retirements than in real life at this race so <laughs> that's always nice anyway let's move on and here are the career statistics this was andy's 173rd grand prix his best start is from first has 16 pole positions, has set 29 fastest laps. His best finishes in first has completed 103 races, 79 of them in the points, has won 44 Grand Prix, 4 at the Indianapolis 500, 6 in Monaco, has 8 championships under his belt, has scored a total of 530 points, has retired 70 times, has experienced 3,570 out of 4,501 laps, has 8 bronze trophies, 17 silver trophies, 44 gold trophies and as an extension 44 podiums. And now let's have one final look at the championship standings. Jackie X manages indeed to win the 1968 Drivers' Championship, Pedro Rodriguez 2nd, 3rd Chris Amon, 4th Graham Hill, 5th Richard Atwood, Bobby Unser finishes the season in 6th, Andy Higgs after an absolutely appalling season somehow manages to finish the season in 13th. The last person with points is Johnny Servoz Gavin down in 26th and bringing up the bottom of the driver standings is Moses Solana down in 41st. So those are the drivers let's now move on to the constructors where Scuderia Ferrari win the championship by only 3 points Owen Racing our second, third Gold Leaf Team Lotus, fourth Bruce McLaren Motor Racing, Rec Parnell finished the season in 5th, Matra International 6th, Bayerische Motor and Verke AG managed to finish the season in ninth despite a horrible horrible season and the last team with points are joe bonnier racing team down in 17th and bringing up the bottom of the constructor standings are john love down in 21st so that was the mexican grand prix a disappointing result for andy and bmw on the account that well we didn't score any points 
However, overall it was a much better race than a lot of other races this season since we actually managed to finish. So I guess that is a plus. But yeah, that is the end of the Mexican Grand Prix and the end of the 1968 season. So I, I don't know what to say about this. And this was the worst season for Andy Higgs. So I don't know. I don't have words to describe my feelings really. So it is what it is, I guess. And before we move on, let's take a look at the team and driver changes for the 1969 season. And we'll start as usual with Ferrari. Their lineup will consist of only Chris Amon with Bell moving to McLaren and X moving to Brabham. There is however talk of bringing back 8 times world champion Higgs to the team for a 4th season. Whether or not that will prove to be true remains to be seen. Cooper have decided to retire from Formula 1, leaving their drivers without a drive for 1969, with only Vic Alford finding a seat at the newly formed Colin Crab Antique Automobiles team. Owen Racing will have a completely new lineup for the coming season, consisting of John Thirties, Jackie Oliver and rookie George Eaton. Team Lotus and Goldleaf Team Lotus have refolded into one team under the Goldleaf banner. Their lineup will consist of Hill, Rint and Andretti. Over at Brabham, Jack himself will continue driving for his team and will be joined by Belgian Jackie X. With Pierce Courage retiring next season, Rec Parnell Racing have signed on Mexican Pedro Rodriguez. Joe Siffert will continue to drive for Rob Walker in 1969. Dan Gurney has decided to focus on IndyCar racing and therefore will not be joining us next season, nor will his team. Honda will be also retiring from the sport, only returning as engine suppliers from now on. As such, John Surtees will be joining Owen Racing and David Hobbs will not be on the grid next season. McLaren's team will be made up of McLaren himself, Denny Holm and former Ferrari driver Derek Bell. Joe Bonnier will be returning for yet another season in Formula 1. He will continue to drive for his own team, although it will be renamed to Equity Bonnier. Following in Lotus's footsteps, Matra Sports and Matra International will fold into one team under the Matra International banner. Their lineup will consist of Jackie Stewart, Johnny Servos Gavin, and Jean Pierre Beltois. Scuderia Scribante will be missing from the grid in 1969 and so will their driver Dave Charlton. Team Gunston will be back for another year in Formula 1. Their drivers will be John Love and returning Formula 1 driver Sam Tingle. Caltex Racing and BMW will not be returning to F1 next season. Silvio Moser has decided to form his own team and compete with it in 1969. And we also have a handful of new teams joining us next season. Among them are Frank Williams Racing Cars, Right now they are debating whether to take Pierce Courage or Andy Higgs on board. Team Lawson is another new team joining us in 1969 and they chose Basil Van Ruyen as their driver. Jack Holm Racing are yet another new team joining us in 1969 with rookie Peter De Klerk behind the wheel. Pete Lovely, a newcomer to the sport, has decided to form his own team but is unsure whether to drive himself or to sign on 8 times world champion Higgs. Yet another new team for 1969 is Paul Seitz Racing with rookie Canadian John Kortz at the wheel. And last but not least we have Alan Pease returning to Formula 1. He will be driving for the John Marin F1 team. So those are the team and driver changes for 1969. With so many new teams and drivers it is going to be interesting to see how the racing dynamics will change. And since pretty much every team is planning on using wings in the coming season that will also shake things up quite a bit. But with that, we say farewell to the 1968 season. It's been quite an interesting season, rewarding for some and very disappointing for others. But that is the nature of motor racing. And since 1969 is going to be Andy's final season, I'm hoping that we can restore at least a bit of his pride. I don't think that we will be able to win the championship, but we can at least try to A, actually finish races and B, try to score some points, maybe even win a couple of races. But with that, we say farewell and that is pretty much it for this video. So as soon as this video goes live, I will give you guys a few more hours to vote for next season's team if you haven't done so already. So make sure to check out the link in the description and go to the straw poll to vote for whichever team you would like to see Andy drive for next season. And as far as the name suggestions are concerned, I will give you guys until Monday to send in any name suggestions you might still have, although keep in mind that I will only accept one 
name per person. So if you've already suggested a name, I will no longer accept any new names you might have. And also remember to type in name suggestion in the comments, as I said many times during the season. That way it will be a lot more easier for me to find the comments at the end when I will want to gather them all up and compile them into a straw poll for you guys to vote for during the coming season. So yeah, in 1969 you will have to vote for a name for Andy's son as well as the team that Andy's son will be driving in 1970. So that's going to be fun, I guess. But yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, stay sharp.